interesting, isn't it, when we think about worship, our mind tends to immediately jump to being in church and gathering together, doesn't it? That's what we've kind of understood worship to be. And I think in this COVID time, maybe we've all reflected a bit on what, what does worship actually mean? And we all know we're worshiping God with our lives. It's not just what we do on a Sunday, but trying to really think about that and articulate it has been an interesting journey during COVID-19, I think. For me, I've been quite drawn to the passage in Isaiah 58, where God makes it really clear that worship isn't really our gatherings and our rituals and our things that we normally designate as worship, but that worship is our loving and embodying his love with the people in our communities. It's feeding the hungry, it's helping the oppressed, it's all those things. That is kind of what he, the way in which he's calling us to worship him. And so for me, that's been really interesting because one of the things that we've been doing during lockdown is to do food hampers. It's sort of like a food bank, but very relational. It's people in our local community, and by community, I mean local neighborhood, living on the estate, have brought food to, to our house or to my co-minister Owen's house. And then people have contacted us and, and we've given out food. And for me, this has been very much part of our worship. It's not been something we've done as an action without God at the center. It's been very much something we've done God, with God at the center. So to give you an example of that, why is it worship and why is it not just something any, you know, the council are giving out food. How, how is what we're doing different? How is it worship? And for me, it's worship because God has been at the very center of those food hampers. We don't have any any finance or any way of funding this ourselves. So we've just been relying on God to provide the food and also relying on God to draw to our attention who we should give it to. One particular day, I'd done all the food hampers of the people I knew and then suddenly somebody dropped off masses of food that they had. And um, it was in the evening and I, I was going up to bed and I looked at this food all around my hallway and I, I just said to God, who is this food for? Anyway, I went upstairs to bed and in that time it took me to go from the hallway up to the bedroom, I received a message on my phone from somebody in our local community asking for food. And it was amazing. It's not someone that we were journeying with spiritually in any way, just somebody I know in the local area, but I was able to text her back and say, wow, it's amazing that you should text right now, but we've got loads of food. And I've just asked God who was all this food for? And I did say to her, this might sound a bit weird, but I've just asked God, who is this food for? And now you've texted me and it's obviously for you. So I think this has been worship for us and for me personally, because it's had God right at the center. The Bible says, what you do for the least of my sisters and brothers, you do for me. And so it is in giving this food that we're worshiping God. It's in trusting him that he will provide the food that we're worshiping God. And we're seeing the way that he responds to us in the provision is a way in which this, you know, worship is a meeting, isn't it, of, of God's love and our love together. And it's been really like that. And just experiencing God providing through his manner. Joining in with God's mission in the world, that's something that's really close to my heart. I've been reading a guy called Stefan Pass recently, who's written a book called Priests and Pilgrims. And in it, he states, and I think he's quoting someone else, but he states, there's no such thing as missional structures, only missional people. And I think that sometimes we can try and find what are the structures, what are the models that are gonna help us in our mission. And in fact, I think what God's saying to us is we just need to be missional people. And for me, that means really grasping the values behind a missional posture. What does it mean for us to live into the belief that we are called to join in with the mission of God? We felt like God was really good to us because when we first moved here, 
One of the first things that we felt God say to us was that he would show us where his Holy Spirit was at work through the community. And so what we've done is we've listened to the community and we've responded to what they've said. So for instance, we talk about faith when we're invited to. We do activities when the community asks us to. And we feel that's because, unfortunately, when I walk around the community, I can't see tongues of fire <laughs> rested on people or places. But when people ask us to do things, they're asking us to do them because I believe God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, has been at work in them. And so they are flagging up to us that the Holy Spirit's been at work. So, for instance, during COVID-19 um, lockdown, somebody had asked us if we'd do a Bible story group for some children in the community. These aren't people who are a part of our, our church here, somebody beyond that. And so that to me is a sign that God's Holy Spirit was at work because why, why would they ask that? And so we joined in and we did it. We join in with blessing the community when people suggest things to us and we think, yeah, let's, you know, we'll, we'll join in with that particular thing. Um, and so for me, how are we called to be missional is we live into our values, with our missional posture, so it's about who we are and not what we do. And we listen out for where the spirit is at work through what people beyond the church tell us, share with us and invite us to be involved with. When I think about church and how I'd love us as a Baptist family to reimagine our life together is I would love us to stop defining ourselves by what we do and start defining ourselves by who we are, by what our values are, by what we believe. All of that feels really important and I know that is what we say we do but we don't necessarily. I was reading a book the other day and it used the language of what we do in church. It was talking about how we engage in the world and it used that phrase, what we do in church. And I found it suddenly really shocking because it sounded so boundary that what we do in church, whether it be Sunday services or the toddler group or the luncheon club, or all of those things, it was all about how we behave and what we do in church. And I suddenly realised that I just don't ever use that language of what I do in church. I do things in the local neighbourhood. I am the church. And I would like us to really grasp that as we begin to reflect upon this whole time of not being able to gather as church and not be able to be in the buildings. I'd like us to really grasp what it means to be the church and to do things in our local neighbourhoods and networks. Being the church, out of the church, not being the church, in the church. So that's been a really important thing for me and I, yeah, I think it's operating around our values rather than around our activities, being the church not going to church and being in the church. I guess I'll share with you that one of the biblical narratives that I've been living with during this time of lockdown is the story of Gideon. So I don't know if you can recall the story, the Midianites are beating Gideon and his army the whole time. Just keep beating them, keep beating them. And then God speaks to Gideon and says, you've got too many men in the army. Now this is completely counterintuitive because Gideon's already losing. And so 
to reduce the army more is a complete nonsense in human understanding. But we're not talking about human understanding. We're talking about God's economy here. So God says to Gideon, you have got too many men. If I allow you to win with this number, you will boast against me that you won the fight, not that I did it. So you probably know the story. Starts off with 22,000, ends up down with 300 people and they go out and win. Now I've been living with this biblical narrative and I feel that God's laid it on my heart because one of the things that I've seen during lockdown is that resources have become reduced. So finance has been uh, reduced, human resource has been reduced, it's all gone right down and I feel like God has been laying on my heart that he actually wants to use us in a place of weakness because he wants us to rely on him. I think he wants us to rely on him financially, wants us to live by, by faith financially, perhaps much more than we do now. I think he wants us to rely on him for our other resources to be able to do things. And that is what I long for us as a Baptist family. I long for us to lay down our strength, our resources, all the things that we can do in our own power and our own might and look to God to provide what we need.